He's a liar and a thief. Sure. A latter-day Francois Villon who lives by his wits and what he can steal. A jewel thief, maybe. Expert safecracker. There isn't a safe in the world that he can't open with his bare hands in a matter of seconds. I've got it. Of course, it means we have to start all over again, but that's not too serious. We've only got eight pages. Now, let's see. We're all right through Alexander Meyerheim production, Girl Who Stole the Eiffel Tower, original story and screenplay by Richard Benson. We can still use the Bastille Day jazz, only this time, we don't start on Gabby. We start on Rick. Rick? That's a wonderful name for the mysterious stranger. Don't editorialize. Just start typing. Exterior, day. A picturesque square. Amidst the throng of merrymakers, the camera picks up a, a rather tall, rather suntanned American. We'd better change his wardrobe. Put him in some kind of a liar and a thief suit. You know, various shades of black. Now, moving with the lithe grace of a jungle cat, Rick approaches the table where Gabby is getting the brush off from her actor. His almost superhuman intelligence takes in the situation at once. He hesitates. If there is a single chink in Rick's armor, it's a pretty face. He comes to a decision and moves off to another table where two denizens of the underworld await him. Just call them first gangster and second gangster. Well, Rick, have you thought it over? I'd say I'm considering the proposition. It is a plan of great simplicity and beauty, and yet highly original, very daring. Voila, Monsieur Rick. Now, we need you for two things only, to open the safe and deliver the note. A few hours' work, and for this, a million dollars, which we will, of course, split three ways. Half for me, the other half to be divided between you two. But, Rick, you have already agreed. Gentlemen, it's a well-known fact that I'm not only a brilliant safecracker, I'm also a liar and a thief. Half for me, and the other half divided between you two. Very well. Well, I will pick you up with a car at four. Until four, then. Henrik, resist at all costs your continuous and overwhelming impulse to perform the double cross. We will not this time be so understanding as we were last year in Tangier. Having established a climate of suspense, intrigue, and high romance, we've arrived once more at that magic moment. The boy and the girl meet. Okay, now we need more conflict. A new character, maybe. I've got it. Seated nearby is Rick's deadly enemy, Inspector uh, Gillet of the International Police Force. It is apparent that he knows something the audience does not know. And now, Miss Simpson, that we have set the wheels of our plot in motion and inflamed the audience with a passionate desire to find out what happens next, and I don't blame them, I'm just dying to find out myself, we can pause for a few pages of chit-chat, getting to know you kind of stuff, the thing I do so brilliantly. The question is... Where should this charming little scene be played? At lunch! That's it. 